Hey YouTube, it's Marvin here. It's riding season again. So this is my friend uh, River Cross uh, Scooter. Last time he got a minor accident, that's why he gets some scratches right here. And that's because he got confused with a brake and a trigger trouble. And that's the reason why we're converting it. And this is gonna be a little bit interesting because I'm not going to replace the whole thing, the CD assembly. I'm just going to get rid of this and then attach the wire into the board of the display. There, it has like three connection right there. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And by doing this actually way, way cheaper than buying the whole thing, you, all you have to do is to buy this hand throttle. I bought this from Amazon. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below. And because we're only changing the thumb throttle, it means we are going to retain everything. Your mileage, trips, and all your settings. And that means that you don't have to reset up again. If you replace the whole assembly, it's gonna be back to zero again. Right, so without further delay, let's do it. This grip has hole at the end. That's the purpose of it. If you don't have the holder, you have to squeeze here and then blow air here so that you can remove it. And this is the compressor I have. California Air Tools, very quiet. They also have a big one. This is the brand that most dentists use. That's why you cannot hear it. All right, so I'm gonna start by removing the Trigger Weaver uh, So when removing this there is gonna be a spring inside Okay It should come up down simply now There you go Here, oops. Here the spring came off is going there and uh, I don't know where's the spring go That's weird. Oh, right here. <laughs> the spring right there. Let's show you guys here that the trigger throttle has a magnet right there. And the sensor is right there sitting right inside. So like that, that's the neutral. And when you depress the uh, throttle, the magnet is moving. So the sensor is sensing the position of the magnet and that changes your speed. Right, so this wire here that's uh, connected to the ignition key. Uh, if you have Apollo Ghost or similar, uh, this is exactly the same aside from the Apollo Ghost. The ignition key is separate, so it has another wire that goes in the display. Again, they are exactly the same inside. So here, they like said the sensor is right there, and this is the pins of the sensor. That's where we gonna tap the three wires. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the sensor because the thumb throttle it has exactly the same sensor inside. It also have the magnet inside of the assembly. That's all we have to do is to attach these three wires into there. But of course we have to remove the sensor. Otherwise it's gonna be two sensors there. It's very simple. You just have to know which wire to attach to which pin. All right. So let's uh, unscrew the board. So there's two screws. Okay, so be careful the LCD. They're not that sensitive, but I mean, it's only two screws. It would be easier if this one is not attached to the display. Oh, by the way, the four screws here, you don't have to remove it. This is only a cover here. Let's see. Oh, sorry, I just don't wanna. See, here is the sensor. That's the one sensing the, the magnet. Right, so we have to remove that. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a hole right there. And then the wire can go here. Because I think that's lots of room. 
right? The sensor goes in the slot right there. So let's see if there's gonna be lots of room to go there. Let's see it's again. Yep, because there's a gap right there from the board to the housing. You guys can see, so I think that is yeah. So remember that the printed is facing this way. Just in case we need to know the orientation later. So I'm just gonna cut, cut it halfway. Right there. There we go. Right, so that's the sensor. Three pins. And now we have also three pins here to connect the wire. Just gonna spread that a little bit like that. All right, so now we have to find out which one is the ground. This is the ground. This is the positive uh, supply. And then the white one is the signal. All right, so we just have to find it out. All right, okay, so I connected the LCD display back to this connector here. And then I set the multimeter to continuity, which gonna give you a beep once the test probe is touching each other, it means it's shorter, there's continuity. So, and here, make sure that the ignition key is off. Whether it's off. And here, as you can see, there's a capacitor right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, that went in right there. There's two capacitors. There's a black color on the side. That means that's the negative uh, pin of the capacitor. So right now I'm just gonna find where is the ground, even though I should, one of these supposed to be connected to the ground. See, this is the ground, All right? So I'm gonna put like the pin here. Oops. So this is the negative of the board and the center that's the negative pin and both sides one of them is signal one of them is the source so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna switch the multimeter into voltage my my multimeter has like an auto detection of like the polarity so i just said that if i put the test probe on the Wrong polarity, it will show negative voltage there. If it's the right polarity, it will show positive voltage. Negative is the center pin. So let's just do that. And again, one of the other side should have voltage. That's for the red wire. So let's turn that on, switch on, and then let's turn on the scooter. There you go, it's on. Now we're gonna try to find where is the voltage. The center pin, just make sure not to short any, anything. There you go, that's, we have 4.7 volts right there on the left side where I'm facing right now. I just switch it to the left side. I'm still gonna put my test probe to the center one, the black one, which is negative. I'm gonna try the other pin. The other pin, there is no voltage. That means that is the signal pin. So if I move this negative to the positive source, my multimeter show should show like negative 4.7. It's hard to see that. There you go. I don't know if you guys can see that, but then my multimeter is showing negative 4.7. And if I switch that, it shows 4.7. So again, this is the positive, negative, and this is the signal. All right, so that's how we're going to connect the wire. Turn it off. Let's make sure. All right, guys, so I cut the connector off right there, and I get the wire ready. We open the end of it, and then as you guys can see, the wire is color coded red positive negative and a signal and i'm going to solder it temporarily so make sure that the ignition key is off 
you don't want to make some shortage there. Right, it's just a very long wire. I think this is supposed to be for e-bike. I'm just gonna tie it here so that it won't go anywhere. It's not right. So the this is the positive. The center is uh, the negative, which is ground. I'm gonna put the ground first. Again, as I said, it's gonna require basic soldering skills. So let's make sure that they are not gonna be shorted when you tested it. And so the next one is the signal. That should be good just to make sure not they're not touching each other. There you go. All right, so right there, positive on the left side, center, and negative or ground, and the white one is the signal. All right, so we're gonna try to turn it on, and if let's see if it's going to work. All right, so moment of truth. This is the new time throttle, and it's soldered, and I'm gonna turn the key on. Hopefully, it's not gonna, nothing's going to smoke. All right. The ignition key is on and let's turn on the right it turns on and of course make sure that your scooter is leaf off the ground right now you guys can see that but it's sitting on the small foot uh, stool right so I don't see any smoke I'm gonna try to push the throttle oops the other way actually the other way Oh, nothing's happening. I can hear now. There you go. Can you guys hear that? You know what? Let's lower the camera. Let's see, I'm going to. All right. So I don't know why it doesn't do the speed. Oh, there you go. There you go. I don't know what speed we have right now, but see, okay, so that in the, now this is third, that was on the first gear, so there you go, it's third, oops, 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 all right, so that's enough, that's enough testing, we're gonna solder it permanently now and then put everything back because we confirmed the connection, so that's good. Alright, so what else I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just turn it off. Right, so I already cut the wire because it was very long. So I think this is uh, enough length. When stripping the insulation of the wire, do not cut it like this. Because if you do this, especially if your knife is very sharp, there is a chance that you will accidentally cut the inner insulation of the three wires or even cut the wire itself. So what I'd like to do is... I already started it actually, so like what I'd like to do is to cut it like that, All right? Oops, that's dangerous. Now split it open, please. You don't damage the. There you go. So if you just want to add more, you can just go like that. All right. So there you go, and. You don't damage the insulation of the wire. It's gonna open each end of it. Alright, so I'm gonna grab my soldering iron. Alright, so this is my portable soldering kit. This is I use to fix my RCs. You can see there's trucks there. That's my very first RC. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some lead on the tip of the wire. Every time you solder something, it's a very good idea to prep it. Just like putting the some lead on the contact, also on the uh, on the board. If you have to, you can do that as well. So that when you solder it, they're just gonna 
melt and then stick to the connection, right? So I'm gonna grab the board, and it's actually it's here with me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a hole first. You guys can see what I'm doing, I guess. Right, so I am going to use soldering iron to make a hole. Uh, this uh, soldering kit comes with different tips. You guys can see that I'm gonna use this big one because this one I don't want to get that dirty. I always use that for soldering. This also comes with a flat uh, tip. This is the one I use. As you guys can see, it's already dirty to cut a hole in the plastic, like a square shape. And also comes with a very tiny tip. This is very useful if you are soldering on a very tight space. And now I'm going to change the tip to make a hole. Right, so I'm just gonna unplug, put this away for now. I'm gonna unplug the soldering iron. And you can use a flyer, but I, right now I don't have a flyer with me, so I'm just gonna use this. It's not tight, I guess. There you go. Not tight, so should be good. It's just gonna be temporary anyway. This one doesn't have to be really tight. But I should have, well, this is just me. I'm lazy to grab proper. What, I'm going to grab a long nose, proper long nose so that I can do my job properly. There you go. I'm gonna plug it in. So the tip and the wire, almost the same size, so things should be good. It's going to clean that up and smell that the uh, smoke is going to be really bad. And where's that? Okay, still the same. A good thing when you're doing it with soldering iron is very easy to make it bigger. Unlike, you know, if you drill it, you're going to change the drill so that you, you can make the hole bigger. There you go. Okay, that's it. I'm going to unplug the soldering iron again, change the tip to the soldering tip. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to bend that a bit so that it will... There you go. If you want to seal the hole, you can use black silicone, and that should be uh, help. You know, like preventing the water. It's gonna sit like that anyway. That's gonna be underneath, so I don't think that's the water gonna go in there. And then my friend doesn't even ride during, you know, like a rainy day, so. I don't think that's an issue. Okay, so I have to change the tip of the soldering iron first. Okay, another tip is like when you open something like this, it's a good idea to take a picture in case something happened, you have a reference to how to put it back the way it was. Right, so I'm gonna start soldering the red one first. I was thinking to solder it like that but I think this could be you know like I don't trust that so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna cut it like very short. I'm gonna cut it very short like that and then we're just gonna tap it to the solder uh, because as you guys can see that this is double-sided board it means that there's a circuit on both sides sometimes like one wire there's a two connection, one connection on this side, one connection on the other side. So it's better to leave the pins that go through on the other side and then just tap it right there. So, all right, so let's start the soldering process. Just make sure that you don't short it. Again, what I'm gonna do is to clean the tip first. Oops, look at how dirty is that. that and then I'm gonna put a little bit solder on that pin I'm 
There you go. And I'm gonna attach the red one. If you guys cannot see it, I'm gonna show it to you guys close up when it's done anyway. Alright, so it's right there. The red is attached. I'm gonna do the negative now, which is the ground, the black color. Always to do it one by one so that you won't make a mistake. When soldering you really have to make sure that you have enough lead on the connection also you have to make sure that the soldering lead is properly melted like it's just like cooking you don't overcook it you don't undercook it it has to be right also just to try to set your soldering iron on the right temperature as well gonna tell you what the exact temperature <laughs> but I'm just gonna use this to clean it up a bit the flux you can also use the old toothbrush after using this and but what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make sure that there is not shorted in between either I'm not pushing it I'm just making sure that there is gap between the connectors Right All right, so it's time to test it. Right, so connected, I turn it on and it works. There you go. So everything works as it should. So I'm gonna put everything back and then do the final testing and it should be good to go. Let's clean the LCD later. I just have to try to position this first. Yep, so it's like that. Huh? So the wire goes under here. Right, so close everything. That's how it looks like now. And the thumb throttle is already attached there. That's how it looks like from the bottom. And this is the thing that we remove. And also the sensor right there. And then let's put it back. Here I use a small amount of the handle uh, on the handlebar to make it easier to install the handle grip. Using soap is a very good idea because it will dry over time. Uh, never use oil or grease because that stuff stays and your handle grip will feel loose all the time. Right, so it's done. Final test. Key on. There you go. And we mode is working. Gear one, gear two, and there you go. This is way better than the trigger throttle. Now you can do actually modulation. It's not really sensitive. There you go. Let's go to second. Third, wow, it's shaking. Oops, all right, guys. So, that's how easy it is to convert your scooter from trigger throttle into thumb throttle without replacing the whole LCD assembly. All you have to do is to buy this some throttle separately. I'm going to leave the link in the description below 
Uh, Disclosure, that's gonna be my affiliate link. You don't really have to use it, but if you do, I would really appreciate it and it will motivate me and it will help me to make more videos like this. And uh, thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. Right, so here it is. Better than trigger here. You're not gonna get confused with the brake. And you can, as I said, you can do more like a modulation. As you guys can see, that the scooter still doesn't move. Unlike the trigger, is just very sensitive. Yeah, I don't go. have to worry about this jumping up anymore.